Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. It's a beautiful day here. We're just getting down to cut some more hay. And I thought it would be a good idea to show you how we sharpen this cutter bar. Okay, I'll come around. It. We pulled the, uh, the cutter bar and the guard bar out of this here since we had some rain coming. And maybe, well, depending on how much you're cutting, you want to do some, you want to keep it serviced daily if you're cutting a lot. We're using it maybe four to six hours a day when we cut hay, right? So we grease it, the cutter bar gets greased every two, three hours of operation. The whole machine gets greased every four hours. So are, is um, there... <laughs> We've had this plane that has been like circling our farm all morning and we don't know why. We think it's pretty cool. I don't know if we got you, but got the plane, but that's kind of an interruption. We'll show you some footage of that. They're going but, along with the helicopters. <laughs> We've had helicopters circling two or three different times too. We considered that probably, what, the Sheriff's Department? I think it's about pasturing our cows. <laughs> no, I honestly that, think because we have had such a drought, maybe the USDA is coming over to see how. Who knows, but that is the highest I've seen. And when I was hooking this up, that's pretty cool. he came over fairly low. I could see people in the windows and such. But I don't know <laughs> what it is or what it is. That's okay. But what I'm doing right now, if you want to show this. Yep. So we're back from the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lens I, I there. <laughs> bars out of this cutter bar right now, and there's a not a slot back here that the uh, bar Sorry, runs in the, the guard bar actually, and it gets grass behind it, and then mixed with the oil that I put on it, you can see it gets this stuff in there. So every so often, I pull both bars out to sharpen the cutter bar or to change it and then I'll pull the guard bar too and uh, check it all out and then I clean that there so you want to be careful because it's a finger getter sometimes okay so this will be just a short video but we want to show you how so anyway clean all them out right there We'll go over here. I've got the okay. We do know how to make a mess, but for today, that's because we're always working. No, that's just because. Okay. So what I've got here on my little four-inch grinder is I put a sanding disc on. I don't know how many grit this is. We buy these at Tractor Supply in their clearance bin all the time. It says T27R88. So it looks it, like an 80 grit. It looks like an 88 grit sandpaper. It's pretty coarse. And this is what I use on the bar. Okay, so you can see that he sharpened this. I haven't sharpened it yet. No, but you have in the past. It's I not a brand past. new blade. It's no, this not is, a brand new cutter. This is about four years old on here. So have you had to change any of these rivets like this? That one you could tell I did. I didn't do that one too good, but this blade has been changed and there's the rivet. Okay. Um, what I should show you, these take a certain rivet. What I'll do if you want to stop a minute, I'll get two blades. Okay. Okay. We were actually asked on one of the questions and comments, and I'll answer that. This is a B blade that fits our normal uh, hay bind that we used to use, and it does still fit our, our new idea that I converted. These are the blades. They have writing on them. It says R&M on it, but there's no significant number other than the serial number they put on it. These Any are the anorossi? blades. These are the blades they sell for Anarasi. Now you'll see the difference here on how much longer see well wow, that they blade give you a is good extra half inch and the holes in the back 
actually are a little offset to these stick back a little further than those holes are punched on there and you'll notice the holes on these are straight through whereas these holes are tapered which comes to the rivets the rivets are flat heads not round heads for these bars because of the double action so that allows for that rivet to set flush once it's seated in unlike the other rivets when they're put into these bars are allowed to stick up because they don't have to deal with a double action these have to deal with a double action so they need to be flush on both sides that looks like they give you a lot more room there's a lot to more tooth in there too. and I'll tell you what it looks thicker too heavier if it is a lot heavier than this one weight wise which tells me there's a lot more meat in this one this is the bottom of it these are the tops you can but see that looks like it's tempered really it is a totally different looking blade if you go back to back with it so I'm not sure what number blade this is this is a B here and we've so about how many times do you we have to change our actual um, cutter blades is it a rivet I was looking for? Um, well if you hit a rock a lot of times this bar will jump over a rock but there are some times when we hit a rock or a woodchuck hole where you will tip the end of this blade off which I have one here I I changed a few days ago and you can see it took the nose off of this blade this was from our other oh bar. that's a good example that's usually what happens I've never had a blade completely break off it usually just takes the tip off and it's mostly from a stone or something in the field these here will they will cut small limbs and twigs and trees I mean anything from your thumb to a little bit bigger is it doesn't even know it's there it'll clip it along a hedge roll or whatever a portable fence post it'll clip it right off it'll clip a portable fence post right off but I was trimming fence that's when I broke that one I actually hit a metal post and nipped the end of it off I got too close to the metal post so that's usually what happens with these bars here so, okay, so we're going to sharpen I'm gonna, this. I'm going to make a separate little clip of that so you don't have to listen to the grinder. So bear with okay, me. Okay, so me. one real quick thing you want to tell the folks. This you, turns counter -clock, or clockwise. And when you sharpen knives, you want to sharpen into the blade. And that's hard on the back side because it's wanting to go this way. And I've tried coming around this side to get it in this way, and it's hard. You really can't do it so I suffer with it and I, I sharpen this one this way and then that one that way at an angle now you see these blades do have an angle and um, it's about a 30 to 35 degree angle so you have to angle your grinder when you sharp it and you do each tooth okay so let me shut this off and we will get you sharpening this It helps if you have a Hold little on, patina. Start it. Is it start now? It helps if you have a little patina or a little age or dirt on the blade, then you can see what you're actually taking off and not taking off. I don't keep it in one spot too long. What'll happen then is you'll see it turn blue and you've burned the temper right there and you want to polish that back off. So this took less than really a minute to but do the entire you. blade. Right. And what it's mounted on here is just an old saw horse we have. Um, and I took this clamp. It's just your regular little turn clamp. And that's what I used to mount this on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over. Do you do both sides? I normally don't do both sides every time. You can't. 
really sharpened from the back, what you want the back to be is perfectly smooth and flush. That's how you get your razor cut. But you can see the serration on the back of the blade here. It looks factory. And what happens after a while though, even sharpening the front side here on this side, is that metal will tend to curl just a little bit over. You can see it on this one here. See how that metal looks like it's worn over a little bit? And you can't really see the serration there. It looks like somebody ran a little beetle weld or something along that. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll take and clean this back side up. You can see the, uh, this was just pulled out a few days ago. You can see the uh, hay that accumulates in the dirt underneath it here on it. So what I want to do is take and just polish this up with that sanding bit. And I'm not going to directly get on these. You don't want them angled. The knife cut that it's supposed to have, if I can get the other knife out here. If you look at a new knife, it's perfectly smooth on the bottom, actually slightly disc shaped, and then the top has the angle to it. And that's what you want to keep on your cutter bars. You want to keep the bottom as smooth as possible, flat, and then the top has the bevel. And that's what gives you that sheer cut when you're cutting. Okay, so folks, I'm going to let him polish this up, and then we'll take a little short clip of him inserting it into the Anarasi. Okay. I'm filming now. So I've lowered it down. I've got the three-point hitch all the way up. That gives me more room underneath, but I'm going to insert the guard bar right now. This just slides right in. It should slide in. If your bars are not sliding in, whether they're the guard bar or the cutter bar or the cutter bar, you've got a problem. Now what we've got back here, I'll pull it out. You can see the, the bushing that that runs in. And there's two arms here. So I'm going to bring that back up there. Okay. And I'll get the pin for it. Okay. Go cutter ahead. Bars in. Now we're going to insert the cutter bar. Always wear gloves. These things are very sharp and unforgiving. So it's better to wear a pair of gloves. Don't be sorry. Don't need to be without a finger. Or a cut finger. And there again, this bar should slide in very smoothly. And as you can see, I have to long. work it along. 
probably help if I had a little oil in it. Still went really smooth. Yeah, I have to turn the cam so the pin's easy to get to, but it's still pretty easy right where it's at. Okay. It's ready for its pin. All right. Well, we'll let you all get back to work, and we're going to get well, some hay cut. And after you put it in, just give it a nice little light coat of oil, and you're set to go. And we want to thank you so much because, and I'm going to turn this around so you can see Peter and I. I don't know if this will work, <laughs> but we want to take dizzy. this time to thank you for having over 400 subscribers. We can yep. hardly believe it. We're having a great time making these videos and we wanna just thank you so much. Like seriously, we are so humbled by even that you would wanna watch us because we're <laughs> sometimes a little funny. But and if, if you're watching it flying over, it's easier to watch over. So I don't know who the flyover was today or the past week. But. All right, well, we wanna thank you again and tell you to have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends about our channel and just have a really nice day. Anything else? Have a great day. Okay, bye now.